New boyfriend? I don't remember seeing him around the house. Once we know that Vince is gone for good, and you get a breather, you can look around. You know, you really adjust very well to things, honey. And I appreciate it. It makes things a lot easier. Chief Fox is on his way up because Internal Affairs has completed its investigations of the 123rd Street block party, right? Alesi, under no circumstances will a member of this bureau refer to a stakeout where two robbery suspects were shot dead as a block party. Unless it's me. Uh, tell her Earl called. Infinity. You were a woman. You think it'd be difficult to be turned on by a man whose first name was Earl? I don't know about this one. Oh, yeah, the daughter was killed instantly. The mother is in intensive care at Brooklyn General. I telephoned Brooklyn Homicide when I saw it. I talked to Detective Corsica, who caught it. He and DeBiase are handling it this far. Nobody heard any shots. They're sure a silencer was used. We're looking for anybody yet? Well, it could be very simple. She and her second husband just split up. He moved out a couple of days ago and is believed to have taken off for Florida sometime after the murder last night. According to Detective Corsica, home life was not too pleasant. Anybody able to talk to the mother? Yeah, she's been on the operating table all night. They still don't know which way it's going to go. It's a pretty good stove in the basement. I can have him hook that up till you got something you like better. This should be fine. Now, you got your key. I'll put your receipt in your mailbox. What's your first name, Mr. Walker? Alvin. Everybody calls me Al, you know, friends, people at work. Yeah. Well, welcome to Manhattan. Uh, good morning, Chief. Good morning, huh? Surrounded by his two favorite concubines. Caesar sat and waited. Want some coffee here? Uh, yes, if these two will go get it for me, very kindly. Very good. And that's it, uh, two sugars and a cream, right, Chief? Two sugars and a cream, right. Timbro is pressing me on a final on that 123rd Street stakeout investigation. So give the deputy commissioner your final recommendation. You may not like it. Are we talking about the same case? 
I put in three detectives in the back room of a liquor store. Two stick-up men walk in with M16 automatic weapons. It's the same case, except there's a question of the time that elapsed from the time the detectives requested the perpetrators to surrender and the time it took them to blow them through the storefront window. What do you think now? Those detectives, they were married men. Yeah, wives, lots of kids. In all three instances, yeah. The dead men. They had pulled off four armed robberies in Manhattan. Their body count was three dead civilians, all unarmed senior citizens. Uh, Ed, would you have spent a lot of time talking those guys into giving up? I'll pass on that one for a moment, but let me tell you what we're going to do about the shooting. We're going to put it down as legal and within standards. But the ammunition found in the detective's guns was not 158 grains as prescribed. It was super velocity, 250 to 275 grains. A bullet like that can go right through the perpetrator across 123rd Street and smash right through a brick wall. They were using unauthorized ammo, so... So, the recommended disciplinary action is eight days loss of pay and a written reprimand. They work eight days without pay? All right, here, tell me something. Does the press release include the fact that they were reprimanded and disciplined? I can't control what a reporter will put in or leave out. No, I think you ought to give them everything, Ed. Uh, you know how they like background. Put in that the dead bandits had M16s, which fire 120 rounds in eight seconds, and they very seldom got through a job without proving it. That's no excuse, Earl. Also put in the fact that they had the liquor store owner and his wife in the same position as the prior victims. Now, you know that that's outside the purview no, of my no, investigation. I'm not even sure what purview means. All I know is when I send out detectives next Saturday night in the same situation, they got to know that if they get the bad guys, who are there, we're still on their side. Now, that's a simplistic answer, and Kimbrough and a PC have not been and a PC have seldom have ever been in the back of a liquor store on a Saturday night. Everything is simple there. Maybe I forgot. Maybe it was complex when you and I worked robbery. All right, Earl, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to write you a memo restating the departmental policy on the use of unauthorized ammunition. And you're going to distribute it. That's a terrific idea, Chief. You busy for lunch? Lunch. and ties if you keep chasing calls. Uh, 
Yes, Mr. Furley. I am just not going to hold still for this any longer. Now, you have been out four of the last six working days. Nineteen days off in two months. Uh, yes, sir, but I've explained about uh, my severe allergic reactions I have. It's part of my... Uh... For allergies, you take a capsule, buddy, not a vacation. And I still don't have a current doctor's letter. Uh, yes, sir. Well, you see, I've just changed doctors. <sighs> Look, I am not going to get into this again, Colvin. Now, I'm going to recommend termination due to excessive absenteeism, and you can just fight it out with the Employment Commission. Yeah, well, maybe I don't think your job is worth fighting for, hot shot. Maybe I don't think the garbage you put out is worth... I just remember playing out there when I was a kid. It was nice. Maybe we could run away to California. to Central. Request an ambulance. 10 4 2 4 One apparent DOA. Notify detectives. Request Superior to conduct search. Do you have a description of the suspect case? Negative. Sounds like another youth gang, Teller. It's the right neighborhood. Look, check back with the officer after you drop me off. I wonder what they get on this one. Homicide notified and also responding. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Wanna call it? Shall I send Mal Patana home to his wife or uh, do I go get back in the car? Oh, send him home by all means. Your service told you that I called? I returned your call. You were in conference. Yeah, well, I'm sorry about that, but apparently there's somebody around to take up the slack immediately. Yes, there was, luckily. Paul's an old friend. Ah, it's nice to have old friends. That's nice. Paul's an old friend. I'm an old friend. And that's nice. The man can get jealous. I'm not jealous. Well, obviously, the lady can't sit around waiting for a call that may never come. Well, obviously, you are. How much New York does he own? Oh, he doesn't own a lot of New York. Good old Dusty. Uh, he owns a lot of New Orleans. <laughs> After six days, I should let you worry a little. Six days? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. 
You didn't forget your people? Never forget my people. Good. It adds something to our relationship. I'm not sure what it adds, but it's something. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We get cases like that, you know? People get turned on with these different weird little things, you know? <laughs> You're terrible. You think that's terrible? The table for me. Shh. Never mind. Chief, this is Lieutenant Dougal. I'm sorry to bother you, but I just had a call from Sergeant Karnowski in ballistics. I think you should call him, sir. All right, Lieutenant, thank you. What's his number? It's 555-2725. Five, 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 two, two, Aren't you going to be on the wheel the rest of the night? Yes, sir. All right, hang loose. You can have time for a cup of coffee. No, I don't. Uh, Karnowski? I shag. I see. Have you talked with anyone other than Lieutenant Dougal about this? All right, I'll be there in a half an hour. In the meantime, I want you to call Lieutenant Dougal back. Tell him he's not to advise anyone of your call to him or his call to me. Is that clear? All right. I'll have to call me a cab again. As soon as we got a slug in from the Brooklyn Heights shooting, I red tagged homicide in the morgue for any other shootings where a 22 was involved. Were you able to confirm that a silencer was used in that case? No, sir. Silencer's like a bun on a hot dog. Now, this slug on the left came from the back of the dead girl, Suzanne Schiffler. The one on the right is the one I just fired for comparison purposes. Like I said on the phone, Chief, the second slug came from the body of this teenage boy that was killed in Queens. The one, Caravello. long our kid belonged to a gang called the Saints. Wearing one of the jackets when he was shot, anyway. I got it about 145. They're close, but they're not identical. They're very close, Chief. The difference could be accounted for in a number of ways. If, for example, a second slug came from a batch that was hand-poured, or if either one was older ammunition where the casing had become crimped. Let me get this straight. You think both slugs came from the same gun? You think a gun that killed a girl in Brooklyn Heights two days ago killed a gang member in Queens this afternoon? Yes, sir. I looked at that. That's when I decided to call my captain. I almost dropped over when he said I should phone you. Be willing to testify to this in court? No, sir, I couldn't. I don't think anybody could. Well, let me ask you another question, Sergeant. Would you be willing to pass this information on to a nice, friendly reporter if you knew that by so doing, you would be immediately placing yourself back in your dress blues and be sent out to reconquer the South Bronx? No, sir. This is just between you and me. You've done good, Sergeant. Well, I'll leave you to wrap it up, and thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, Sergeant, the way I see it, there are two different possibilities here. Number one, you're wrong. In which case, we have different crimes, different boroughs, different killers. Or you're right. 
We got a mass murderer on our hands. <laughs> opinion now three of the top veterinarians in Manhattan that your cat is fine and they listen to his heart yeah ah, little Bernie did this morning you got to slow down and yeah, keep burning the camel with both ends you said your ears are fire right. chief Louise Shifflin's second husband Vince Palmer just surrendered to the Dade County Sheriff's Office what did he say didn't kill anybody turned in a 22 which he claimed was at his brother's in Florida all the time all right, I want you detectives on the next flight to Miami. Call Konarski and Ballistics. Have them take along a slug that was used in the Shiflin murder. Yes, sir. Does uh, Palmer have a yellow sheet? Well, a couple of assaults, petty larceny when he was in his teens. He drives a truck now. All right, they have a polygraph machine in Miami. If he consents, I want him polygraphed tonight. I also want that 22 fired and comparisons made. Chief, do you need me anymore? No, go. Now, well, here's the medical examiner's autopsy report as requested. The trajectory of the bullets which killed the victim is such it would appear the killer fired the first two shots at the daughter and then shot her mother. All right. You're busy on what I told you. Right. Oh, Chief, you're still considering the wife the prime target? I don't know. The appliance store? Yeah. Six hundred and something plus the cassette recorders. Help! Please! Help! Hold it. Anybody else down there now? No, but maybe the man's 
still there. Keep I her don't up know. here. Get us some help, huh, Ted? Come on, ma'am. It's going to be all worked out now. It's going to be all right. Now tell me, what did he look like, ma'am? I don't know. I don't know what he looked like. He was young. Was he? Was he black or white? He's a young man. That's all I know. He was young. Okay. And he was white, okay. maybe. He was be okay. City under 50 who isn't black, so that's it. Anything on the weapon? Well, from the size of the wound, looks like about a 22 caliber. We have to displace two officers on the operating room floor. We'll have the same two officers covering post operative and returning with the patient to this ward. You mean it might mean somebody will return? We don't know, but if he does, they'll be expecting him. The girl's going up to surgery? Yeah, she's up there now. The girl thinks she's got a pretty good chance. But, Chief, this is Officer Wright. She and her partner were the first ones at the scene. Hi. No. You didn't actually see the perpetrator. No, sir. The first thing we saw was the witness come running back up the subway steps after she found Nancy. Okay, Officer Wright, let me talk to you over here, please. Excuse us. Earl, she did a hell of a job. Hey, that's it. That was a girl conscious at all. In and out. While we were applying the pressure bandage, I couldn't get a word out of her. But later on in the ambulance, just a couple. Kevin says you think she has a chance. Not a very good one, but a chance. They have some terrific team of emergency surgeons here. How do you know that? I saved my dad. I, I kind of grew up around here. What'd she say in the ambulance? That she couldn't describe in words to that effect. She was fixed on the gun. But sometimes I'm able to get an impression just by suggesting some possibilities. Come again. Well, I said, could he have been a workman? And she said, no. Then she said, maybe a student. I mean, something could have registered subliminally. Okay. Officer Wright. Be sure your homicide investigators get this on the DD-5s. Any chance a train could have been passing at the time of the shooting? Yes, sir. The 319 Express was just passing. All right, we'll get out a bulletin. Maybe we'll get some information from one of the passengers. Any witnesses in the station itself? Nobody on her side. I told the people on the other side of the platform to stay there. Later on, my partner went over, but all they saw was the girl lying on the platform after the Express had gone by. Okay. It's nice meeting you. Captain. I'd like to talk Chief to you. Chief Uh, hello. How are you, Captain? Hello. I'm Margaret Manning. Are you the plainclothes woman who saved her? They're trying to do that upstairs now, Miss Manning. Nice, modest answer. Tell me, any particular reason the chief of detectives would roll on a subway shooting? I didn't think to ask him. Well... If it's correct, Creighton says our chief of detectives has information linking all three killings to a maniac. Commissioner, this is exactly the type of behavior on Eyeshide's part that convinced you he should no longer be chief of detectives, and as soon as practicable, no longer a member of this department. But you can't fire a man who, with Earl's experience, knowledge of the department, and let's face it, friends in high office on the basis of a tabloid newspaper column. Do you want to have it quietly verified by the Inspectional Services Division first? I'd say he has a few friends there, too, Jim. No, I feel my instinct in calling him up here and hitting him with it directly is right. I have been wrong before, sir. Then let's learn from the experience. Yes? Chief Eishak, Commissioner. Please have him come in, Sergeant. Morning, Commissioner. Morning, Jim. 
Morning, Earl. Want some coffee? No, thanks. I've had my limit. Jim just brought something to my attention. Take a look at this, Earl. You will want to read Tommy Creighton's exclusive report, Earl. Have you gotten as far as, according to sources within the department, certain physical evidence supposedly known to Chief Eyeshide already exists linking the three shootings together? Yeah, I've gotten there. Common motivational link is being sought, like in that a city of eight million is now under siege by a psychotic killer. Creighton always writes very colorfully. I'm not going to tell you how I happen to get a hold of that. Well, maybe the managing editor sent it to you. I don't need that, Earl. I am not going to apologize because we have some rapport with the press, some belief in the First Amendment. Wouldn't either if I were you. Earl, does physical evidence exist tying all three shootings together? Yes, sir. How long have you known about this? I'm not sure. I didn't ask if you were sure. I said, how long have you known that there was one psychotic killer? Since the night of the second shooting, sir. You've known for 72 hours and you let me find out from a damn newspaper? Well, objectively, that's true. What the hell is it subjectively? False? I'd like a chance to explain. Believe me, Earl, you will get a chance to. I don't know what particularly paranoid process of reasoning you follow that leads you time and again to believe that information flows upward in this department until such point as it reaches the chief of detectives desk. At which time you, in your God-given wisdom, withhold it from the men who are trying to bring this department into the second half of the century. You've asked for a chance to explain, Earl. You got it. Now I warn you, your future in this department is riding on your explanation. Do you have any work to do? Move it. Alicia. Infinity. What are we here for, Miami? Well, Lieutenant Krantz called about 20 minutes ago. He testified the 22 Palmer who brought into the Dade County Sheriff's Office. The slugs don't match at all. What about the polygraph? It was inconclusive. All right. He didn't shoot his wife, kill his stepdaughter. But I don't mind if the water stays muddy a little bit longer. How'd it go with the PC? It was rough, but I'm still here. How in the hell can you be sure the second husband didn't do the shooting? You begin to swear, Affinity. Tomorrow morning, the press telegram is going to break a story that all three shootings, Brooklyn Heights, a gang kid, Nancy Metzger in the subway, were all done by the same man, or conceivably the same man with a little help from his friends. Kimbrough, there's a dummy front page of the telegram and a copy of Tommy Creighton's column for tomorrow. Creighton says he got his inside info on a psychotic killer from somebody in the department. I don't buy that. You know, Rick, you still got a patrolman's mentality. 25,000 close buddies, eh, Lisi? Down together by a real sense of camaraderie. Were you able to keep you cool with the PC? Well, I was able to convince him I withheld information on the first two shootings because the ballistic support was not absolutely conclusive. And to reveal them now might hurt us legally later on. And what about Kimbrough? Dinosaurs never change. Huh. But even he had to admit it made sense to wait for the results from Florida. Rule out the prime suspect in the first shooting. What about the press telegraph? PC's office won't answer the allegations till they clear it with me. Try a case in the headlines, you're never going to win it in court. Affinity. You know Sergeant Konofsky in ballistics? Dutch. Ah, sure. You. He helped us make a case once when we found a gun. Yeah, up yeah. Save it for your book. You know him well enough that he wouldn't get suspicious if you bought him a few drinks. Someone gets suspicious if Finity picked up the tab on a large Coke. I'll buy him a drinks, Chief. Sure, he tipped you off, and now you want to find out if he's got a new source of income from the press telegram. Uh, not so much that. I hope, since we're going to need him down the line, that he didn't sell anything to anybody. But what I want to know is, who's he been talking to? His wife, his girlfriend, uh, people he works with, a bartender, people like that. I'll call him right after lunch. Now, that's assuming the columnist Tommy Creighton is telling us the truth about the leak in the department. But if he's not, if he has an outside source, we're going to find out who that is, too. What's the matter, Creighton? I got a letter from a nut this morning delivered to the paper. Relates to a couple of murders. But obviously, if it's a nut. I'm not sure. There's nothing in the letters that he couldn't have found out by reading the papers. But there is a twist. Thanks. I gather there's no way for you to contact him? Not so far. 
But if you're some kind of multiple killer, I want to establish contact with him face to face. What about the police? Right now, there'll be more harm than help. Part of the problem is he wrote directly to the paper. I'm never sure how many people we've got on two payrolls, the press telegrams and the police department. Well, maybe you could get him to write to you at your place. Different people, same problem. I'm not sure there aren't a couple of papers around town who try to read my mail before I get a look at it. I don't know a lot of cops. I don't write a column. I don't have to tell you it's dangerous. You want to roll the dice with me? I already have. Chief Eyeshot's office. Oh, thanks, Doctor. Listen, we, we'd like to be able to call on you later, and we'd also like to talk to her as soon as possible. Thank you. Nancy Metzger's out of danger. Two out of five so far. Thank God he's not the best shot in the world. Rick? I want you to reach out and find some people you and I can work with. Okay. There's a list of precinct captains. Uh, creations of her eyes, huh? Yeah, they better not forget it either. I want them to send me one detective each by tonight. Infinity will lose the paperwork on them. Oh, you mean they're here, but nobody knows it for a week. I just like the CIA. Now, I don't want to meet them here. I'll tell you where later. I also do not want to meet people anywhere with crew cuts, polyester knits, sport coats, white shoes. You want someone more or less like me? Yeah, but bright, too. I also want some lady candidates. And again, I don't want to meet... Wait a minute. It's a plainclothes lady out of the 19th, name of Wright. Pull a file before you call her in. Okay. Uh, Chief, you want to interview her before you make your mind up? You better believe it. She may be a lady, but she has a street cop's instincts. It's going to take street cops to break this case. Not Kimbrough's computers. Carol, you accept this transfer. I want you to tell as few people about it as possible for at least the next 72 hours. If you do accept, you do an outstanding job, and I'll try to bring you to the bureau. Detective third grade. What the hell do you want me to do, Chief? Yes, say yes and no first. You weren't thinking of this assignment when you talked to me before, were you? No. Any idea what this case might be? Something to do with the shootings? That's right. We're going to get the man who shot Nancy Metzger. There'll be a lot of reasons we give for getting him. He killed two people. Almost killed three others. Yeah, and he may kill more. Carol, if we can take him alive, there will be people, certain people, who will say, terrific, they got him. Now we can study him. Find out how he got screwed up. Maybe we can prevent the same thing from happening to some other kid. I don't believe that, Chief. That's not our problem, but that's what some people will say. Or we can kill him. And then people, most people, will say, thank God they got the animal. Now we're safe. They won't be. No, that matters. There's not a lot we can do about it. But those are the reasons we'll give for it. Now the job, the focus of the job is simply to get him. A cop's reasons are always a little bit different from most people's. That's why I thought you'd take the job. See those men over there playing chess? One in the red shirt? His name is Rick Alisi and his partner, David Camarillo. We're working with you, among some others. Let's go here. See that Cadillac over there? It's seen better days, but there's still 120 miles per hour under that hood. I'll introduce you to detectives Dietrich and Chasen later. Just in passing, Chief, he's due home any minute. Okay, we'll be careful. Is that the man we're after? No, that's Detective Slate. Is the girl one of ours, too? Uh, I think Detective Slate's trying to make her one of his. Hold it. Tommy Creighton. Press Telegram's highest paid columnist. The girl with him is Miriam McCandy. She works for the UN. Gorgeous lady. Most of Tommy's girlfriends are. He pays her rent, which allows her to bank most of her salary in return for, among other things. She gives him the latest information on the sex and narcotic scandals in the UN, leaving out, of course, the things that she and her friends are too deeply involved in. Aspect of life. Well, you people are going to be sticking with Tommy from here on in. Somewhere down the line, he may lead us to a cop who's forgotten who he really loves. And what I'm asking you to do will be legal when it comes to something that may not be legal. Call me. Hey, buddy. Beg your pardon? You know, you just come in here with your father. Uh, what is it he drinks? Uh, my father's dead. I'm sorry, you're wrong. 
Irish whiskey. He buy a quart of Irish whiskey. Brayton just left his apartment. He's crossing fifth. Looks like he's headed south. I got him. Roger. They were fine here, anything. Here in the city. It's another story. just made contact with a male Negro, 25 to 30 years old, six to six feet one, shaved head, wearing a gray pinstripe suit. It's just like one of those FALN bombers up on the bullet board. Are there any uh, bulges under that pinstripe suit, Chase? Kiss off, Deepik. I'll break into your locker and burn your clan sheet. Hey. He just passed him what looks like a lot of money. restaurant for the second straight night at midnight he returned to his apartment in washington square and was observed working at his desk terrific on him three days now we found out as he goes to discos art galleries the mayor's office and it works nights the only mystery is why he slipped the black guy the money any ideas on that what about the tap it's working at uh, 2.15 this a.m., Detective Slate monitored a call from subject to the press telegram for a Green Arrow messenger to pick up his column. Then he called the village deli, spoke to a Chinese lady. All right, all right, all right. Tomorrow morning, Carolyn Dietrich changed assignments. I want you both to cover the press telegram building. He never goes there, Chief. I know. The managing editor furnishes him with a full-time secretary. Maybe she meets with a source up on the roof, or maybe they get it on together down the linotype room. I don't know. <laughs> Breaks don't come, you try to make them. 